I am the lost girl, Samantha Heights, and you're watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I would like to welcome you to our interview with Samantha Heights. Hello. Hello, how are Hi, you? I'm, I'm great, how are you? I'm awesome. We're here at Smash Wrestling from the ground up, where you just faced Xandra Bale. How are you feeling about everything? Overall, I mean, it sucks that I didn't win, of course. but you know, can't win them all. Um, no, ultimately though, I'm you know I'm pretty happy with the match. I think uh, the crowd enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I mean, I kicked her in the head a couple times. It's kind of a thing. So hopefully, it was good enough to to get an invite back. We hope to see you back. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> when it comes to wrestling, were there any wrestlers in specific that made you want to step into the ring, or did you just have a love of it all? So this is gonna sound a little weird, uh, but one of the things that made me love wrestling was Billy Kidman's really, really dangerous looking shooting star press. I think everybody knows the one where, you know, he almost killed himself. Um, not that one in particular, but you know, <laughs> seeing him do the shooting star press, that's kind of what made me want to wrestle. I mean, I had loved it before that. Always loved wrestling, grew up watching it with my grandparents, my family, and you know, kind of just fell into it. You okay. know? Something that I noticed that I really enjoy is on your Instagram. You like to begin a lot of things with sometimes, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. And I'm sure that this is something you're quite aware of. Is it an inside yes. joke between you and somebody? Or how did that start? No, you know, it just kind of it just kind of happened. I mean, I have a habit to, uh, to develop crutch words on occasion. And sometimes, <laughs> sometimes is one of those. Okay. So... Well, one of those sometimes you posted that I liked was sometimes I just people watch. And I'm not sure if I'm alone, but sometimes when I people watch, I'll like be sitting downtown on a bench, and I like to envision their lives. I kind of take a little oh, yeah. guess, a gander into this person. Is that something you do too? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. I mean, backstories, conversations. Sometimes I'll give like a, you know, the running thoughts in their head. Stuff like that. You, too. you know, it's It gets fun. It gets entertaining. Got to do something to pass the time. Okay. So. You're also a self-coined lover of Mike and Ike. And I like how out of all things you could have put in the little amount you're allotted on Twitter, that's one of those that made it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, so Mike and Ike, I have a long history with Mike and Ike. Well, um, we have time. So please share. <laughs> well, so and Mike and Ike is one of those candies that, you know, it's it's kind of kind of gooey, kind of mushy, but only after you actually put it in your mouth and start to chew it. And it's always just been really weird to me, you know, that the texture kind of changes after you put it in your mouth. Um, but, I mean, it's one of those candies that's just easy to pop in your mouth on road trips. Okay. When You're I'm, on a lot of those. Yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah. So, you know, you got to find different little ways to keep yourself awake on the road. And Mike and Ike are just easy to pop in and, and eat to keep me awake. So, it's... <laughs> I mean, they're delicious. They come in different flavors, different colors. What's not to love, okay. right? Well, just speaking to road trips, your car, you actually have a Freddy Krueger bobblehead on the top of it, which I thought was adorable yes. when I saw that. Yeah. You a big horror film lover, or is it mainly Absolutely. just his movies? I, horror in general. I actually have a like a, a cute little tattoo of a haunted house Aww. on my arm. I like the bats. Um, Freddy is definitely my favorite. He's probably the first villain I'll say that I can really remember like enjoying as okay. a child probably just because he's such a smart ass <laughs> I mean he's got all kinds of just funny quips and, and one-liners so he's probably my favorite because of that but horror in general is kind of a kind of a big thing in in my life so well you said enjoying Freddy Krueger how young were you when you said a kid watching it did it not scare you oh man so this is going to sound really messed up, but I can remember <laughs> watching Freddy Krueger as young as like five or six years old. Because um, okay. I'm, so I'm one of five kids. My oldest sister is six years older than me. So basically anything that she did, I kind of followed yeah. behind, even if I wasn't supposed to. But I mean, it happened. It's, I didn't really get like nightmares or anything from Freddy. Honestly, the only thing that's ever really given me nightmares, like horror film, is the leprechaun and Leatherface. Okay. So, which is weird, but never Freddy. <laughs> never Freddy, because he's the one who haunts your nightmares, and I don't, I don't it happens. Yeah. Would you say The Nightmare on Elm Street, since Freddy's your favorite, is like the ultimate horror film, or what would that narrow down to for you, what that boil down to? Ooh, the ultimate. See, that's difficult. I'd probably say yes, just because, I mean, Freddy's one of those ones that can really, he can really mess with you. 
you know, because you have to sleep. Like, you have to. There's no getting away from it. You know, you don't have to go to, to Camp Crystal. Like, you don't have to go <laughs> to Haddonfield. But, you, you know, you have to sleep. Yep. He can get anybody. There's no escaping him. Exactly. So he, I mean, I think the fact that he can get anybody anywhere, that's what does it for me. I like the thought process behind that right? very much. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, aside from being, um, like, an Ike lover, you're also a Wookiee in disguise. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yes. you have to tell me a little bit, and I mean this in the most endearing way, like, kind of the nerdy side to you, because you yeah. even had a Pokemon pouch when you were doing merch, and, like, I, I just love this. I, yeah, I am just a big geek. I mean, me everything from Star Wars, Pokemon, Peter Pan, uh, a little bit of everything I really love. But with the Wookiee, so we we have this inside joke. It's not really inside. It's quite a few people, actually. Um, you know, anybody who navigates is the Chewie because that's what he does with Han Solo and, you know, in Star Wars. And so I somehow always get saddled with finding the GPS, getting the, the directions, you know, all of that. It's kind of my job. So there's that plus the fact that I just love Chewbacca like I, I'm not very good at Chewbacca impressions don't ask me to do one okay but I love Chewie in fact I have a uh, I have a hoodie at home that's just covered in fur when you flip the hood up it's all covered in oh. fur and it's so warm and it's the best <laughs> it's one of the geekiest things I own probably what do you say is one of the geekiest so, things about yourself one of the geekiest things <laughs> oh that's difficult. Ah, there's just so much. Um, so I have this really, really geeky tendency to kind of equate people with uh, with movie characters or, um, you know, cartoon characters, stuff like that. Okay, so like if you meet somebody and you have a first impression, you're like, oh, you remind me of Exactly, okay. exactly. It happens the majority of the time I am kind of relating people to different Sylvester Stallone characters. He's my favorite. Yeah, I know. He's okay. <laughs> I know. He's my favorite actor though. And uh, again, don't ask me why cuz why? You don't need but, you don't need a reason why. Right? But so I I had this really really bad tendency to like when I first meet someone, "Oh, you remind me of Rocky." Or uh, not necessarily even just his characters, but characters from his movies, you know? Okay. So, that's probably my geeky thing is kind of, you know, Connecting people to characters. Well, with all of the driving that you do from car to car, is there any time for you to catch concerts? Uh, on occasion. I mean, okay. the majority of my traveling is uh, on the weekends. So during the week, you know, there, especially in Cincinnati, there are a lot of different places in Cincinnati, Ohio to go see concerts. There's places like uh, Bogart's, Riverbend, the PNC Pavilion, everywhere. Um, in fact, just a couple of weeks ago, I was lucky enough to to go see Green Day and one of their last stops on their their last tour, which I was went on that awesome. Tour too, yeah. Oh God, I, just, I it was so much fun. It was such a great show, such a great concert. But you know, that's most of them are throughout the week if I get to. Yeah. But it's besides that, it's been a little while since I've been able to actually go and enjoy myself at a show. Okay. So. Well, although, oh, I'm yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you no, off. Don't the although at a. At, at Rockstar in Dayton, the, one of the places that I wrestle, they actually are a concert venue as well. That's what Jake Chris so, just said. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes there will be a show there and I'll, you know, I'll slip in. One. and Exactly. I get to go hang out. I get to go see a show. And it's right around the corner. So it's kind of convenient. But awesome. It doesn't happen all the time. Well, let's wrap things up. Is there anything you would like to leave with your fans who will be viewing? Any parting words? Uh, any parting words? Mm. I'm going to give you one piece of advice. Bite the ends off of a Twizzler. Use it as a straw. It'll change your life. <laughs> I'm telling you. As someone who has done that multiple times, it's a oh, great yeah. hack. So do it. Right? It's, it makes It's great. It makes everything more delicious. <laughs> it really does. Just don't drop the Twizzler in to the drink because then it gets soggy and also guilty. gross. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But that's my best piece of advice. Other than that, just <laughs> don't be a douche. Have a good day. Make every day, you know, something worth it. That's about it. Life advice from Samantha Heights. That was brilliant. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. No problem. It's a blast. Thank you. And remember to everybody viewing, you can visit us at musicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more. We'll see you.